You know what? Serverless is often hailed as the future of web deployment. You know, effortless scaling, no server configuration, no Docker files, just write your code, deployed, and kaboom, your website is live on the web. But what if I told you that serverless is actually a mistake and makes your workflow, but also your website way slower? Would you believe me? Well, let's look at that. So let's first of all start with why has serverless actually gained so much traction? Well, the idea is very simple. You just manage your code. You don't have to manage any servers, Docker files, anything like that. You just have your code and you deploy it. The rest is done automatically without any of your inputs. So this means platforms like for example Vercel or AWS or also Cloudflare promise auto scaling this means scaling up or down depending on your traffic also for example high availability and also reduced operational cost this means your bill should be at the end of the day smaller than with a server full deployment this sounds a bit like a dream doesn't it well it could be a bit so for many use cases, serverless is great. Serverless takes a lot of the heavy lifting from you, no more managing, no more load balancers, no more traffic spikes, no more CPU upgrading, everything is done automatically. I don't have to do anything and this saves me a lot of time because I can focus on my code and I can forget the server. So on the paper, it sounds very, very cool. It should be cheaper, it should be faster and with less complexity. But does it really deliver on all of these promises? Because at the end of the day, what is written on paper, but what is reality is often completely different. So let's look at that. Let's start with one of the most notorious issues people have and which I also often encounter. And this is called cold starts. So every time a serverless function is invoked, which means whenever you visit a web website, it has to spin up. This means loading your code, initializing your code, and then at the end, executing your code to serve the website to you. In theory, this should only take a few hundred milliseconds, but in reality, it often takes a lot longer, and this is not very good for the user experience. Now, if your application has relatively sporadic traffic, which means if you don't have a lot of users, which is completely fine, then you will experience these cold start issues more often, and this will lead to a slower website. So let's imagine you're running an e-commerce site and your user experience a delay every time they try to add something to the cart. That's quite a big problem. You make money by having a good checkout experience and if you don't have that, well, this isn't a good look for you. Cold starts can be mitigated somewhat, so you can run a cron job which hits your website, I don't know, every few minutes and with that your website can stay warm. Nevertheless, there's no official way. This is like hacking around and something which is not very pleasant if you can call it like that. And now let's also talk about another issue with serverless functions or in other words, another drawback. And this is that serverless functions are not designed to handle long running tasks. This means by nature they are stateless and whenever you process a request and everything has been served, well, the serverless function will just quit. In other words, it will just shut down. This means when you want to run, for example, a corn job or any long running task, well, you can't do it. You have to use some other third party service, which you have to pay for, which you have to again rely on, something we don't really want because at the end of the day, services are not free. You have to pay for them. And again, you don't really want that. So you're kind of in this position where you have your code or in other words, your website, which you don't have to manage. But whenever you want to do something extra, you have to use a third party provider to create the feature which you need. And this is not something I really like. And also, instead of now having one point of failure, you have multiple points of failure. This means if, for example, your service provider for the corn drop goes offline, well, what do you do now? Your website is running, but the corn drop is not working. Now your website is kind of working, but also kind of not working. This is an issue. When I have a website, I would rather have one single point of failure. If the corn drop is not working, then my website probably shouldn't be working as well. But if you have multiple points, well, then one could not work but one could work and this creates a lot of problems. With a traditional server, you don't really have these constraints or in other words, these problems. You can persist background processes or long running jobs as much or as long as you want because your server is running the whole time, 100% of the day. No upscaling, downscaling, it just runs and it does not turn off, at least if you don't turn it off manually. 
Now let's also talk about cost. Cost is very important and you don't want to pay for something that you don't need. Serverless is often marketed as a cheaper alternative because you only pay for that what you need. Or in other words, you pay only when the serverless function actually executes. So for simple low traffic websites, serverless functions are indeed way cheaper because at the end of the day, you only pay for the invocated serverless function. This means if you only have, for example, five users, you only pay for five serverless function executions. But as your traffic grows and also the complexity of your website grows, you will see that the pricing will add up really, really quickly. For example, again, every function which is executed incurs a cost. This means if you have millions of invocations per day, well, you will pay then also for this amount. And this is quite a lot. So now we have talked quite a bit about serverless, what I don't like and everything like that, the problems with serverless, but server full deployments aren't perfect either. They have a lot of problems and I won't lie about that. Managing your own servers can be a huge pain and I'm talking from experience. In most cases, you need to set up your own CI CD pipeline, manage Docker files or in other words, Docker containers. You have to handle your own server crashes. This means in the middle of the night, your server could go down and you have to fix it by yourself. There won't be a team who will run or fix everything. You have to do everything by yourself, which again is first of all, not very easy, but also very time consuming especially if you have to wake up at 3 a.m. and fix your server. Again, I'm talking from experience. You don't want to be this guy. So what's the conclusion of this video? When should you go serverless? When should you go server full? Here's my take on it. For content focused websites, which means for example, blogs or some landing page, or for example, my website, janmarshall.com, I would always aim for a serverless architecture. At the end of the day, I don't have millions of users and most of my website is cached. This means, first of all, I don't have to pay for millions of executions, but also I don't really have cold start issues because everything is cached. This means when you visit my website, the first hit is very fast and only when you have to do some authentication, you will run into a serverless function, which means you will incur a cold start. And of course, it's also great that it has auto scaling because whenever I release a big tutorial, my traffic spikes, but after the tutorial is done, my website again goes down or the traffic goes down, which means I don't have to manage anything. Everything is done automatically and I love that. But for anything which is like a full fledged web application, like for example, dashboards or heavy e-commerce sites or just applications with a lot of users, I would rather go to a server full deployment approach. At the end of the day, it's often a better choice. It's in most cases faster, in most cases cheaper, and also in most cases you have more flexibility. Again, don't forget you can run your own cron jobs, do your own logging, everything you want without really relying on any third party service. So what I would say is if you're a small website, hey, go to serverless. It will take way less time to set up and will make your life way easier. But if you're a bigger company with more users or let's say just a more complex web application, then I would rather look at a server full deployment with, for example, file.io or with a VPS, I don't know, Hetzner or whatever you want to use. So the verdict of this whole video, again, simplified is if your website is very big, choose serverful. If it's quite small, serverless will do the job 100%. And now, if you have enjoyed this video, I would highly appreciate if you would like and subscribe. It's completely free and it would mean a lot to me. Also, maybe consider becoming a channel member to get access to more videos, but also to get access to videos before they are actually released to the public. And now, I hope you enjoy your day. I hope I can see you on the next video. And now, bye.